Okay, an overview looking at the Mozart D major concerto. Um, this isn't meant to be a comprehensive holding your hand walking through every single learning point of the piece because by now you should be able to do that. But more a bit of a, oh, these are some common sticking spots. These are strategies you can use to dig yourself out of them. Here's the shovel, essentially. Now you have to dig the hole. So we start in some hideous type of position. Oh yeah, sixth. Hooray. I would practice getting to that. I know that sounds really crazy, but you need very strong muscle memory to pitch that note accurately and confidently. So knowing what sixth position feels like, I like to find it from using my fourth finger in third position, get that D. And then try to think about the way your hand feels sitting on the violin right now. I can feel where my thumb's in contact. I can feel where the first finger touches. I've got this angle of my arm being in front of the violin, not commensurate with the fingerboard, but I've come around to my front side. And you want to practice that E being really pure and beautiful and releasing nicely. Now, there's no shortcut for finding those notes except playing them. Go for a walk around your house, see who can drive crazy first, who's gonna yell at you and say, stop squeaking. Um, but make sure they're in tune, right? And try and again, feel the way your hand feels, notice the way your hand feels when you drop that fourth finger on with enough pressure to pin the string, but not more than, okay? Then you're just gonna hurt your hand. Then we retake and go to third position. Up to the A sharp. It's worth making sure that you stop the bow really nicely and get those notes well in tune. And then just treat the semi quavers as ornaments. Nice bow contact all the way through. Uh, then we have some more boring stuff. which is just warming up to the main course here. Now, you want to make sure your fingers are enough to hold the string down, but not so much that you get bogged and can't shift. Um, and it's worth practicing those shifts if you need to. A to C sharp. C sharp to E. You've played that A to C sharp all the way back in country dance, so it's not scary, okay? So this is old stuff. Um, let's play from the... Ready, set, and... One more time with a side on view so you can see how my arm rotates around the violin because that's infrastructure you're going to use this all the way through all the boat starts not just right now in bar 52 okay so this feeling of how that goes with a nice loose left shoulder okay then we have some bogging around on the G I can't sing that in tune for the life of me fine oh okay this shifty bit can be exciting second The trick is to look for where your notes are only a semitone different and use those to shift on. So in bar 60, for example, you're in second. Move with your second finger down to the C sharp. You 
could technically stay in second position for another note, play to the first finger and then move back one to one. But then you have to move a whole tone and that's inefficient. So don't do it. When you have phrases like that, look for the two notes that are a semitone different and where possible, use those as your shifts. It may mean that you're moving with a third finger or a second finger. That's irrelevant. What we're talking about is the efficiency of the shift. The smaller the shift, the more efficient it's going to be. And in those semitone passages, that's what we want. Now, the next little bit can be wiggly. Uh, how do I usually play that? I think I usually play that in third position. Yeah. Yes, I like that in third position. So, my bar 62. Take it all under your hand. Fourth position. Sorry, I was playing the next part. <laughs> okay, let's go again from 60. Three, I promise not to budge my notes this time. One and two. One and two. Count strictly. If you're playing your semi quavers slowly, play your crotchets slowly as well. Don't fudge the rhythm just for convenience sake. Keep it proportional and accurate. Okay, now the next thing is Mozart Rondo kind of stuff. Make sure your wrist is loose there so you have lovely string crossings. Oh, more semi quavers. bit there's a few options given upstairs and downstairs I like playing shift on the E using my extended fourth finger there going on the one I'm happy with that my fourth finger is generally uh, strong enough and accurate enough to play it that way and it's the least amount of shifting if you want to shift more and use third fingers on top all the more power to you. Make sure your intonation is good. Uh, then we have trills. E sharp. Rest. 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 Shift. 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 High three. That's a valuable let your fingers fall on. Don't try and bang them down on the strings because gravity is so much stronger than your body. Just relax. Let the weight of your fingers drop onto the strings. They'll be relaxed. They won't hurt. You won't apply too much pressure. Everything will be nice. And then your right hand will be more relaxed because your left hand is more relaxed and those slurs will just flow beautifully. Okay, the next idea is set your bow up well on the G string because you've got those notes are all on G. So make sure your right arm is at a good level to project without booming. Ugh. It's piano. I don't know that it means weak. I think of this piano as more of muted, like you're still speaking clearly, but under your breath maybe. So the person next to you can still hear every word you're saying perfectly. It shouldn't be mumbly or fuzzy or indistinct in any way. Twisted 
my bow. So in there, I think your right hand is really integral to what's going on. The left hand's got it pretty easy, but you've got to know where your right arm and hand are working and have your shock absorbers working well in your bow hold. If your pinky's locked, it's going to sound really screwy. Now, we get into string crossing. <laughs> Be clear about what's crossing and what's all on E string, okay? Cross, cross, stay there, stay there, stay there, start. Oh my gosh, look at that next note we have to find. E, hold on, we've already practiced this idea. It's nearly how we feel at the start. You can test it with your harmonic. Um, I prefer to play this with a second finger. I don't like playing it with a one, but one's marked, so I'm going to play it with a one for now. Oh, you're going to need that light shifting again. Ah, who knew? Soft in here so you can gradually lengthen out your arm as you move down the violin. Find your ego. Yes. Try to move back to third position without collapsing at the wrist. So if you know where it is. We're coming around the violin, but we don't want to break that line. Again, start at your E. Ready, and. And back up you go. There is a false finger there that moves, be careful of it. It's only little and tiny, and because your fingers are quite perpendicular and working down, it's easy just to shunt back along the string, that tiny semitone. Go again from 98, the E. And try and make sure that here your first finger is really pinned on its tip, that it's not sitting back at all, because then your trills will be crappy. Third position. Third. Sixth. Sorry. One, three, five. And because of that, I didn't have my positions clearly marked. And you can tell because I'm thinking, oh, is that fifth or sixth? Oh, yeah. I just doubted myself. And so my shifting was really fudgy then. It's a good lesson. Mark the geography of what you're doing so you don't slide around looking for the note. You're thinking, ah, sixth. Sixth is there. Sixth is where I'm you know, well on top of my violin. Seventh, ooh, a little bit more to the front. Fifth, I can sit back a little bit. Third, oh, I can really sit back so that you've got an instant correlation in your brain to how your body's going to feel when you hit that position. Suffice it to say, that stuff is squeaky. You need to practice it with nice, kind of buoyant, confident tone. If you play it with crappy tone, it's always going to sound, or if you play it with, sorry, a crappy bow contact, it's always going to sound a bit crappy. And then we listen more carefully because it doesn't sound very confident. There must be something wrong here. Listen a little bit more. Oh yeah, I heard it. It was a sixteenth of a tone off. Whereas if you can practice it knowing what you're looking for, what it's going to feel like, you'll feel much more confident. And if it is a sixteenth of a tone off, you'll probably get away with it for that one note while you move it in and correct it and find the ringing pitch. So while we want, of course, to practice it with perfect pitch, I think it's also good to accept that we're human and errors may happen on the way to perfection. How you approach the errors and how you deal with them really affects the way everyone else perceives your playing. Okay, it's tiny, but it's there. So let's go again from 98, that horrible, horrible E. Lucky it rings, we can find it. Now, because your string's short, 
you don't have much vibration happening here so the bow does have to have excellent contact you can't waste any of it because the string's not ringing to help you out ready and dodgy half position in bar 118 where you go from second to half so if we play along the top line second half position first now, I hated that half position learning this I always budged my way around it and it just sounded crap because then I had squirmy fingers and crappy intonation. So just bite the bullet, put it in half position, your body will thank you later. And it's not horribly difficult, it's just you know, eight notes in half position, crammed backwards. Go from the second position, two, one, three, two, four, three, two, three, come back to a C sharp with your third finger, and. That easy, guys. Okay, again, second position. This looks suspiciously like what we already did on the previous page. strings okay not horrendous right all right let's play it moderate sink your teeth in forte that intonation let's play that one again get the F sharp these arpeggios are worth isolating and practicing okay do them one by one do them five or ten times uh, the half position ones on the next line whew, definitely worth isolating and practicing don't try and just rampage through all eight of them at once because you'll want to die by the end of it okay so slowly the first one again pause me practice it have a good shift Again, C sharp, then C natural. Pause me, practice it. Next one. Yeah. One more. I really like that one. It might be my favorite. Now back to second position. Now first. I like that one. Second. Half position. Take your third finger back and across to the G string. So it's in half until you hit the F sharp on the E string. Again. Again. Good. Pause me and practice it. Mm -hmm. 
You can choose there to play that in first or half. Really up to you. The high two, low one is a little bit of a bummer, but guess what? That's in Martini Gavotte. Yeah, no, no, no joke. <laughs> three. I don't like having my fingers that far apart in really fast stuff. It's just personal preference. Pause me and practice it. Next one. Now because you've used the four for the C sharp and the four for the G sharp it kind of makes sense to drop your third finger on for the C sharp and then you spidey your hand back into first position when you hit the G natural on the E string. So four. And then I like going third. Because then I set up for the trills. Let's play the last two ascents again. The half position one. Again. Oh, and make sure through all of these that your elbow is leading the way because you're always going from G down to the E. So let your elbow pull the bow down and across the strings. Third position one. Again. Now here we are. Make sure you start from above the grace notes marked clearly. that again no one ever shifts far enough for that maybe it's a combination of being on the G and putting down the fourth finger and having to shift all at once I think of moving my first finger to a C sharp and dropping the four on if I move my first finger to a C a solid first position and then try and stretch the four it doesn't go well for me it's crap so I'm moving to like a high third position and then my fourth finger will easily fit second squeaky bit over in 203. Guess what? You've already done it and it's in the A major and it's in the G major as well. Uh, let's maybe just play that little scale from 202. Oh, it's actually easy, right? Once you start thinking about strong tummy, soft spine, soft shoulder blades, can move both shoulders easily, shift with my arm, life gets so much simpler. So I hate to break it to you. Once you can play the first two pages of this nicely, you're pretty set. So I would definitely focus on the first two pages well and truly wedged under your belt before investing any effort in the next chunk. Okay, because any mistakes you've made in the first two pages will just get carried on and then you'll have to fix them in two different spots or three or four or 18. Woo. So instead, uh, focus on your first two pages, make them fantastic, then invest the work you've already uh, committed to or established or you know, I've got this. Just plug that into the next bit and I think you'll have it pretty solidly. Remember it's Mozart, so style is everything style is substance for Mozart and you've probably already done it in the G major or the A major. Good luck! <laughs>